Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming. It's lovely to be here today. And thank you very much to S3 UK once again for inviting us to this conference and giving us an opportunity to speak about Chance to Shine. I'm Melda Kahraman. I work as a senior impact and evaluation officer at Chance to Shine. And today I will first talk about our charity, our programs, and the impact we create through our programs. And then my colleague Zoya will talk you through why we needed a mapping tool to locate our new projects and how ArcGIS software helped us to take our projects to areas where they're most needed. We are a national charity with a vision to create opportunities to, uh, for, for all the young ch children and young people to play, learn and develop through cricket. We want them to learn a love of the game and in doing so develop their wider well-being. Every year, 600,000 children and young people participate in our programs. We have two core programs, Chance to Shine Schools and Chance to Shine Street. Chance to Shine works in schools to provide children um, with a brilliant first experience of cricket. We work with 41 county cricket boards across England, Wales and Scotland to send specialist coaches into schools once a week for six weeks and support their cricket coaching as well as the physical benefits of um, regular activity, we use cricket to teach children important key life skills that will help them be on the playground. Our second core program, Chance to Shine Street, gives children and young people in inner city areas the opportunity to play the sport and be more active. Street offers a different and more accessible way into the sport, it is played with a tape ball, which is a tennis ball wrapped in electrical tape. And we have 300 street projects in England, Wales and Scotland. They're all free sessions running weekly and based in a range of venues from multi-use game areas to community centers and places of faith. Two thirds of our street projects are based in the most deprived areas in the country, where young people face more barriers to being active. Through street, every year we reach around 6,000 children, four in, five from, four in five being from an ethnically diverse background. Moving on to our impact and what street program can do for children and young people. Based on Sport England Active Lives research, children who enjoy sport and feel they have the skills to take part are more physically active. Every year we carry out surveys with our street participants and their parents to evaluate our impact and to find new ways to improve our programs. In our participant survey, we used Sport England measures of physical literacy to be able to compare our participants' attitudes with those of young people in England. In our latest survey conducted with 1,100 young people playing cricket at street, we found that a higher proportion of street participants enjoy sport, are feeling confident playing and find support easy compared to those, those young people living in England. Our research with street participants also highlight that street program has an impact on children and young people's personal, social, mental and physical well-being. To give an example, a high proportion of participants agreed that playing cricket at street sessions made them feel more confident and has helped them develop as a person. In terms of programs impact on participant social well-being, many young people mentioned that they have made new friends, they feel more confident meeting new people and doing new things, and they feel closer to their local communities. Placing our street projects in areas where they're most needed is very crucial to our work and to increase our impact. For this matter, when thinking about loca location of a street project, we consider these three key measures. One is the deprivation level of a neighborhood. Two, areas where there is a high proportion of people from diverse backgrounds. And three, location of school well, with a high proportion of pupils receiving free school meals. I'll give you more detail on how do we know the deprivation level of a neighborhood, which is, um, which is a key measure that our mapping uh, is based on. 
To understand the levels of deprivation and poverty, we use the index of multiple deprivation, commonly known as the IMD, that has been produced by the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Governments. The IMD is the official measure of relative deprivation for circa 33,000 small areas in England, and it combines information from seven domains, as you see in the slide, to produce an overall relative measure of deprivation. And it ranks all the small areas in England from most deprived to the least deprived. And to make it easier to describe how relatively this deprived a neighborhood is, it divides those regions into 10 equal groups. As a result, um, there are 10 deciles, one representing the most deprived 10% of small areas, and 10 representing the uh, least deprived 10% of small areas in England. And for our three program, we focus on the 30% most deprived areas in England, which means uh, we are using the IMDs 1, 2, and 3. Perfect. Thank you, Melda, for um, walking us through who we are as, as Chance to Shine and kind of the outcomes that we're looking to instill in all the young people who participate in our program. So my name is Zoya. I'm also a senior impact and evaluation officer, and I'll talk you through what took us to ArcGIS and what possibilities came out of it. So uh, the central business challenge that we face as a national cricket charity is balancing breadth with depth. We work across England, Scotland, and Wales with 41 delivery partners. Um, and while covering that area, we want to make sure that we have local insight and knowledge as to what the needs of the communities are and how best we can meet the young people across the country. And the other challenge was how we could grow our street offer. So as Melda walked us through, we know that young people benefit immensely from the opportunity to play, learn, and develop through cricket, but our goal was to place 100 new street projects in the places where they would be the most impactful. So step one is equipping our delivery partners with the information and evidence that they need to make better uh, delivery plans in terms of where they can take cricket. But then the second part of our, our plan was to then launch an appeal to raise 375,000 pounds to, to begin these 100 new street projects and grow our street. So our technical solution looked at ArcGIS for a number of reasons, but the first step, again, was relating to the data that Melda walked us through. So looking at IMD, looking at ethnic diversity of schools and relative areas, and also looking at the free school meals percentages. Then from that, we went on to create info packs for each delivery partner, um, providing local snapshots of data in line with our broader EDI strategy, which is, again, making cricket an accessible sport for all young people across England, Scotland, and Wales. But in the process of doing this, we ran into the limits of slide decks and spreadsheets, which is our normal way of doing things. So this is an example of uh, an info pack that went to Oxfordshire County Cricket Board. So if you look at this, you can see that we see 7% of people in the area are in a place where there could be a street project, so they are in areas of IMD ranks one, two, three. But looking at this doesn't really guide the county board to figure out where they can place the street project. And looking at it could give the county board the impression that actually it's only a relatively small population that meets the criteria. But actually, we, need, we wanted to find a way to activate that data and make it clear that there's ways across the country that we could be reaching communities, even if from a slide and from a graph, you, you think it's not really an issue or it's not really something that's as needed as it is. And the similar story with ethnic diversity. So again, with Oxfordshire County Cricket Board, you can see that 16% uh, of the young people living in the area are from an ethnically diverse community. But again, it doesn't really tell the story in terms of where can we take cricket and where are these, pe these young people living and how can we reach them best. So given that these are the kind of drawbacks to just sticking to our traditional approach, we decided to pursue our technical solution of using ArcGIS software for the first time as a charity. And this enabled us to do a couple of things. So first, it enabled us to layer the different data points that could equip our delivery partners to make the best decisions on where to place street projects. It also enabled them to identify gaps in delivery by visualizing the data. They could see that actually this is a locality where there isn't cricket existing offer. And finally, it allowed us to bridge the two different uh, parts of our program. So we could place street projects in areas where there are also schools that may be receiving Chance to Shine coaching. And in that way, it created a pathway for young people to not only receive cricket in school, but then play it regularly at the community center through street. Basically, what we were able to do as a result of using ArcGIS is communicate with confidence to our delivery partners and to our donors and funders 
that all 100 new street projects would fill the gaps and be in those areas with IMDs 1, 2, 3, reaching the young people who need cricket the most. With delivery partners, they were able to see possibilities visually in terms of where they could be most strategic in, in taking cricket to places that it doesn't exist. And then also with funders, we could make a more personalized funding ask. So I mentioned that we needed to raise 375,000 pounds. We were able to do that by using this mapping software and providing proof of value, especially as our donations were then match funded by the ECB for the street appeal. So this is kind of a screenshot of the main data that went into the map. So as Melda mentioned, we looked at IMD areas, one to three. We also looked at the percentage of young people eligible for free school meals and also ethnic diversity in these schools. Other elements of data that we incorporated into the map were prior chance to shine delivery. So if a school had received it before, where there are existing chance to shine street projects to map out where the gaps might be. And then finally, if there's a teacher that has actually expressed interest in receiving cricket we were able to even track that and incorporate that into the map so that delivery partners could know that there is an appetite for cricket and maybe that would be the best place to place the project. Next I have a demo of what the, basically the map looks like for the delivery partners. So if we look at this, I'm zooming into an area of Gloucester. Um, so Gloucestershire County Cricket Board would be responsible for this area. And you can see that there's a couple of different data points mapped. So this, the yellow dots are the schools, which provide, again, the data relating to uh, free school meals percentages and diverse young people and also pr previous chance to shine delivery. And the red dots are existing street projects. So you can see here that it's in the areas of IMDs 1 to 3. And then those blue areas are where the IMDs are located. So you can see IMD 1 here and also there. So you're able to kind of map out where this deprivation lies. Uh, and then I'm zooming into another example. So looking at this, I'm going into Darby. So this is another area of the country where cricket is growing. And the yellow dot is another school. So you can see that it has a relatively high free school meals percentage and ethnic diversity, but it's not received chance to shine before. This is another school that has high percentages of both, and but there has been a teacher that's expressed interest in cricket. And in between them, there's a Sherwin Center Street project, which is one of the new projects that came about. So you can see that it's placed in proximity to schools that have this deprivation data that, that is available to us, and also places where teachers might be interested in receiving cricket, especially if they haven't had it before. I think this is going, yes. So then this is um, the map that we shared with our funders um, for launching the street appeal to raise that 375,000 pound target. So with this map, I'm zooming in. Oh, before I do that, I'm looking at kind of the main data that we shared with our funders, so the need for street and what it benefits are. Then you can see that in black are existing street projects, um, and the yellow street projects, which I click now, are the ones that we were able to add. So going in once again to that part of Gloucester that I mentioned before, and the yellow is the new street project that was placed. So this also incorporates data relating to activity levels, um, as well as the other metrics that Melda and I have discussed so far. And we're zooming in again to Darby here. So this is another street project, the Alveston Street Project, that was added. And you can see the similar percentages um, of inactivity levels and the IMD. And lastly, a bit closer to where we are now, I'm zooming into a new street project that um, came about. So the Battersea Street Project, again, reaching the IMD 1 to 3 criteria, um, and also young people who are ethnically diverse and might lack the opportunity to play elsewhere. And then with the snapshot of London, you can see the black are existing, and then as I zoom out once more, the 100 new street projects we were, at, we were able to add as a result of this research and this new um, software that we incorporated into our delivery. So with funders, as I mentioned before, we did something that we haven't been able to do before, which is tailor the fundraising ask using a mapping software to make sure that they can provide funding to the areas that are of interest to them. This ultimately enabled us to carry out a very successful campaign and work towards our targets and ultimately launch those new street projects where they are most needed, which means that we'll be able to reach more young people, bring cricket to them, and help them develop as young people not just in terms of the physical well-being, as Melda has mentioned before, but social, mental, and personal well-being as well. We will need to continue to raise this target each year to sustain these added projects, but we're also hoping to plan growth in our delivery and ensure that 
we can take cricket to even more places and throughout this process that we're being as transparent and strategic as possible about what we're doing as a charity to bring cricket to more young people. And finally, I'm looking at a case study here. So this is the Banbury Girls Street Project, which was one of the new ones that we added. Um, it's located in an area with an IMD of three. Um, ethnic diversity, you can see that 22%, so it, there is a fairly high percentage. And as well, there's 35% of young people there who are less active according to Sport England measures. And I have a quote from Zoe, who's a cricket development manager at Oxfordshire, and she mentioned that there are key areas of deprivation. And this place, which is St. Leonard's Church of England Primary School, is where they're having the street sessions, is the key place to hold a street session. Again, thinking about IMD, proximity to young people, and where cricket could be most accessible. And we've already heard positive feedback. So parents have communicated to Zoe that a lot of them haven't had experience with cricket before. This is something new for them and their young people. Um, and they maybe just tried it out once, but ultimately what brought them back is uh, the tenfold rise in, in confidence and social well-being and personal development and physical well-being. So just being able to make new friends. And again, being able to place the street projects in, pro in proximity to different schools meant we could connect young girls with other young girls, maybe from different schools. So they were tapping into new social networks and getting to meet new people, and that was of huge benefit to them. And here is a quote as well from a participant who said, not only does she enjoy you know, the, the act of cricket, so throwing a ball and learning how to do that, but also getting to meet new people, to inspire them, to become leaders, and actually teach people who might not be as comfortable playing cricket. So again, like this is a community that didn't have this street offer before. As a result of the software that we're using now with mapping, we were able to identify the area of deprivation, bring cricket to them, and it's really soaring as a project. So now that it's been just under a year of using ArcGIS software as a charity, we know that there's so much more that we could be doing with it, and so it's very exciting to be here today and hear from all of you in terms of what we can do. But some things that we've already kind of thought through um, as ideas for where we could take this further, working more with delivery partners to update the data, so everything that's on those maps now will need to be regularly updated to make sure that each year we're able to make the best planning in terms of our delivery. Then for participants, parents, and teachers, it would be really great to create a, another mapping software which would enable them to identify the closest street project to them and hopefully that gap between them and the street project is getting close, smaller and smaller as we're expanding. Then with donors and funders, we'll need to continue to tailor our fundraising ask and make it very transparent to them where we're placing our new projects and what our plans are in terms of growth and delivery. And then finally, as an organization, being able to stack other data points from age groups to gender. So the last project I mentioned was a girls only project. Target populations, incorporating all of that into a map that's internal and you know, supports our needs as a charity in, in terms of evidence would be really great and that's something that we're hoping to expand. So thank you so much for listening so far. Um, just to wrap up, we've been around since 2005. We've re reached 6 million people, 6 million children so far and we're hoping to reach even more. Um, if you're interested in learning more and connecting with us, then I have a QR code. But thank you for your attention and I hope you have a wonderful day.